Okay, everyone. So the last tool in our draw menu on our toolbar is the gradient tool. So there's a little more involved in this using this tool than the other five or six we just did. So um, sit back, download the image, and watch carefully. And I would like you to put this into practice. So basically, um, gradient tool itself is just a tool that lets you fill an area with a gradient. And the gradient is like a uh, a change in color as you go across the screen um, by dragging within the image or by selecting with the gradient tool. So the distance between the starting point where you first press the mouse button and the ending point where you release the mouse button affects the gradient's appearance, as does the gradient type. Just for an example, gradient tool is here on the right or left-hand side. I'm just going to unlock my background layer, okay, so that I can use it. But I'm also going to go to photo bin duplicate and call it after. So I'm ready to put before and after together. I'm going to edit the after. So right here, make sure you're on this one, this image. Zoom in a little bit. And we're just going to go to gradient again. And we're just going to sit, just grab a default, just to give you an example of what it does. Now my transparency is at 80, 88%. So I'll just make it a little higher. Um, over here, there's different options we'll go over in a second, but just to give you an idea of what a gradient does, so you know what we're talking about, is I'll drag my mouse cursor here and leave my left hand finger clicked, bring it all the way across to the other side and drop it. And now I have a gradient over my image. Okay, a little darker than I would like, but because we've done our layers here, we can adjust that with transparency, sorry, down here. So before you apply the gradient, you'd like to do your transparency adjustment. I went a little high. I'm going to lower it. I'm going to come across again. And again, I've zoomed in, so I want to make sure that I can see the whole image when I do this. So I'm going to go from left to right, and I'm going to drop it. And you get an idea of what a gradient does. So it starts off pink, moves over to darker, um, sort of like a purple to black. And that's basically um, the, the basic gist of a gradient. Now we're going to go back to our original image. So make sure your history is open. You do that by window and history or F10. And we're going to apply a gradient. Now, just so we know, um, you can do different kinds of gradients. So a linear gradient shades from the starting point to the ending point in a straight line. So shades from the starting point to the ending point in a straight line. Okay, that's a linear gradient. That's the default. Now you have other options like a radial gradient, which shades from the starting point to the ending point in a circular pattern. So I'm going to select radial down here on the options menu. And this does it in a circular pattern. Okay, so from inside out. Uh, angle gradient is the next one. And that will shade in a counterclockwise sweep around the starting point. So I'm going to start here. And I'm going to go this way. Okay, so counterclockwise sweep around the starting point. Reflected gradient is the next one here. And reflected gradient shades using symmetrical linear gradients on either side of the starting point. There's the starting point. You might be able to see it better if I started in the middle. Okay, so you can see that. Pink is now in the middle, darker on the sides. And our last one here is the diamond gradient, and it shades from the starting point outward in a diamond pattern. The ending point defines one corner of the diamond. So I'm going to start here, and I'm going to stop over here. Okay, makes a diamond in the middle here. Okay, so different visual effects. Oh, sorry, that was reflected. Let me go back here and do the diamond. All right, so it makes a diamond in the middle here. You can sort of see the outline, a little bit of the diamond. So those are different options for the gradients, okay? Uh, opacity, as usual, uh, reverse all, reverse means. If I lower, I'm going to raise my opacity so you can see. Just watch the gradient over here. When I click reverse, it just flips it. No big deal. All right, so to apply a gradient, I just showed you how. What we're going to do on this um, Sahara here, is we're going to use our magnetic lasso tool under, up under selection tools. Uh, again, you have a number, you have the lasso, you have the magnetic, sorry, we're gonna use the polygon lasso tool. And in order to select this, I'm gonna just move in a little bit. 
and I'm going to move over a little bit and I'm going to see, as you can see, that the Sahara um, sand dunes have different shades. So what I'm going to try to do is select a shade and paint it a gradient and do it differently for each shade. So you have to do this very carefully. If you touch the line, it'll close the loop on this tool. And all I'm doing is moving the line and clicking as as I you know keep it straight. And as I get to a curve or a bump, I'll click so I can change direction. So I'm going back up and I'm just clicking every so often to keep it going along the pattern. And here's the most important part. I have, I see that little circle appear on my tool. That means it's time to it can close the loop and give me a selection. So I'm going to select it this way. You don't necessarily have to. You can use the other selection tools like quick selection. Just do it carefully. And the idea here now is I'm going to use my gradient tool and I'm going to come down here and click on this arrow beside it to find a different gradient. I don't necessarily want 100%. I am going for visual effect here, but I'm not going to use 100%. I'm on default in terms of effect. I'm going to come down and look at things like color harmonies. Um, yeah, we'll just say yes. Close. I actually have different, I was creating gradients earlier. So we'll come down and we'll look at uh, different gradients here. So maybe I want some simple so I can sort of blend these together. I'm going to start with this one and I'm going to choose probably uh, I'm going to choose reflected. So I'm going to start from one end of my selection and I'm going to drag my gradient tool over to the other end. My opacity is 73 so I've already adjusted it. I've got to do that first and I'm going to drop. So I've just filled this area of the Sahara with this gradient and if I hit escape a little too dark for my liking so back to selection and I'm using my history to go back up and erase what I just did which makes it easier I'm going to try it again add the gradient one into the other that's a little bit better so I can see behind and hit escape and you can see that you've just painted part of it so the idea here guys is to paint what you see with gradients and that would be your finished assignment here so as you see i can st i started in the middle i have to be careful not to do that but uh, there should be a way to correct it if i go over top of it i'm gonna come around select this carefully and don't be afraid to overlap too to not leave any gaps so i'm going to come over here i'm going to choose a different gradient now I like the opacity I have. Now I want this dark pink to go away from the other dark pink. So in order to make it the opposite way, I'm going to say not reverse. And I'm going to come like this and drop. Okay, and when I hit escape, I've got another mountain painted. Another selection, maybe something like this edge over here. You can be very deliberate with this tool because you have to, whoops, that was not the effect, but it actually looks quite nice. Um, be very deliberate with this tool. As you can see, I keep starting in the sky. It's a little tricky to use. You should probably be more zoomed in than I am. And right there, if you screw up, just hit escape, start again. So I'm going to start down here, drag that guy up. Make sure I'm getting all the sand. I don't want sand in the sky, uncolored. And come around this little curve just carefully clicking in order to change direction with this lasso tool the polygon lasso tool you have to click to make a different direction or change a different direction so make sure you're slowly clicking as you go especially around current corners make more clicks and there i've missed a little gap but good enough for the demonstration choose another gradient this time i'm going to choose purple or maybe I'll stay with the pink and we can reverse and I'm going to try a different angle and I'll bring my gradient line across and drop and I've got another piece painted and so as I go I'm going to be changing the sand to completely be colored in this shade so remember I'm at 43 percent in terms of opacity so I can actually see through and we'll do one more to give you a demonstration why that matters because down here in the dark area I would like to bring it around like this. Don't be 
afraid of the overlap into the new area. That's okay. We just want to get where it's shaded and bring it up. Maybe I'll go all the way across for the purposes of this. Whoops. Get myself over here. Now I'm going to get myself back. I'll just come down and carefully click my way back without connecting so I don't lose my selection. Still going up the slope and rejoining. There we go. Gradient tool. I'm going to come in here. Maybe I'll choose a more darker red. And I'm going to apply my gradient. Now I want to be able to see the whole thing. So Alt, nose wheel out. Gradient from one end through to the other corner and drop and hit escape. And I've colored that now too. But I can see through to see the Sahara and the, con the contour and the tr contrast behind. So that is what the objective is, is to paint the different shades of the, even this would be a separate component right here. Oops. This would be a separate piece right here, this little chunk. This would be a piece over here. This lighter piece would be one, but I'm basically choosing parts of the sand dunes and shading them different colors. And that's basically how you use a gradient. Now, here are some variations you should know. Um, but when I click on the edit button on the gradient tool, I, this dialog comes up. So the idea here is to go under our default and choose a gradient to edit. So I'm going to choose this one. Okay. And when I come in here, I'm under solid. I have these little things here. These are called color, color stops. So this is where the color will start or stop. And when I click on that, I get options. So if I move this in, this little tiny diamond here represents the midpoint between this transparent area where the color ends and this area where the color has begun. So as I move this around, I change that midpoint. Now, the other thing is this is called above it. These, this top side is called opacity stop. So when I click on that, I can adjust the opacity and I can lower the opacity for where the color starts. So you can see I'm changing that fundamentally if I do that. So I'm just gonna be careful, leave it as it is just for the purpose of this example. But if I wheel this over and I made my opacity here a little darker, I would darken the end of this and take away that transparency. So this location just denotes where I am on the gradient. So I'm at 64% if you think of 100% all the way across. So I move that up. I can play around with that. If I wanted to add another color stop, I could do so here and change the color to blue and move that down. And again, this is the midpoint between the first color stop and the second. This is the midpoint between the second and the third. And if I added another one, I get two more midpoints and I can change that color to something else as I go. And now I'm getting a green and I can change the, I can add an opacity stop there and make that a little darker so I can see it, as you see. And I can add another color stop over here and I can change the color to, uh, let's say yellow. And again, I can add an opacity stop and I can change the opacity to make that a darker yellow. And I'm starting to get into patterns up here. Now, this is one I created. So I'm just clicking in, in here to add a, a stop. If I wanted to change an existing stop, I just click on it. So remember the difference. I click here, I add a new one. So over here, if I added a new one and I didn't want it, I didn't want this one, as long as this is selected, that's denoted by the black Arrow, if you see the other ones are white because I'm not selecting them. This one's black because I did. All I have to do is hit delete or the garbage can and it'll remove that. If I didn't want this one over here, I'd select it and hit delete. And now I have another nice color range. I can pull that down. Keep going, right? Change the opacity stop here. Make it a little darker. And you get the idea. So another opacity stop over there maybe. Change the opacity down. And when I'm satisfied with editing this new gradient, I can call it whatever I want under name. So here I'm going to say Jimmy Bobby. My smoothness is 100%. That means between each color, how smooth 
are the transitions that can do hard or soft. So the more smoothness, the more it flows together like this. And I'm going to say when I'm done calling it Jimmy Bobby, when I'm done editing, you would name it. You don't name it before you can't. So Jimmy Bobby, and I'm going to say add to preset. And now Jimmy Bobby gradient exists on my presets. So I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to come back here. I'm going to select just a little patch of something. Actually, I'm going to escape from that. Select a little patch, maybe this little guy here. He stands out so much. Again, this is a very clicky kind of process, especially with this selection tool, but it's much more accurate. And I can simply select, and I'm going to come down to my gradient tool again, and I'm going to come down to my choices, and there we have Jimmy Bobby. I'm going to select Jimmy Bobby. I'm going to increase my transparency, or opacity, sorry, so I can see it better. And I'm going to apply the gradient Jimmy Bobby. There it is. So my new gradient added. Hit escape. I've got a new gradient. So on your work, you need to show me a newly defined gradient like this that you've created. So one of your sand dune surfaces has to have Jimmy Bobby's gradient. The last aspect of this is you may have noticed that instead of when I'm sorry, I'm coming going too fast here. If I go under gradient again and I hit edit, I have an option now to choose a noise gradient I can create. When I hit noise, I get this pops up. So noise gra gradients up here, noise samples. We'll just say yes. And save. Noise gradients look like this. So there's a spectrum of color. It's not just one color. They're busy. They're loud, etc. Now, if you imagine this on a low opacity over something, it gets a really nice visual effect, like say a, a graphic image or a poster or a nightclub or something you could you could put a spectrum of color like this to make the night and make it look like an interesting poster you can do a million things with this so the noise um i'm on rgb mode it is hsb mode i would just say stick to rgb because that's what we're using um you can come along and play around with this stuff if you wanted to you can restrict color and what that restrict color means is um, it won't oversaturate. It'll 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 worry about saturation levels, and keep your color you know uh, reasonable. Let's say. So I'm playing around with it here. Um, roughness is the how how much how many lines and the roughness between the the tra transitions in color. So you can see this gradient has a multitude of colors along it. Each line is basically a different shade. So the roughness is by which I can see that. So if I have a low roughness, or just a brief or a light roughness here, like 75%, I can kind of see the lines. If I move that down, it gets smoother and smoother and smoother until it almost blurs together. The other aspect of this, instead of doing all this, I can also, I can, sorry, one more thing. I can add transparency. So I don't get to control transparency until I get back to the tool, but I can make this semi-transparent. And I don't have the options to make it opacity or color areas. I just have to add transparency and then I can play with transparency. Um, the other option here is I can say randomize. And that's based on this. If I set these back to where they were, make sure I'm not restricting color and I say randomize, I can get all variations of stuff without having to create it. Then I can play with the roughness. I can play with everything else to see what happens, what becomes of it. So randomize just gives me random, randomly created noise. So I would suggest you play around with this instead, but it's up to you. Anyway, again, when I'm done everything, I'm gonna just play around here, see what I can do, or I'm gonna choose a preset and I'm gonna manipulate it. And I'm just gonna get some yeah, some blues. I don't want it to be too much the same color. Uh, once I'm done, I'm going to put my name in here, right? And I'm going to say, this one's going to be called Bobby Jimmy. And I'm going to say add to presets. So now under noise, I have a new noise sample called Bobby Jimmy. And hit OK. So back to my gradient tool, back to my selection tool first. I'm going to select another piece. Maybe up here. That's a nice one. 
And again, as this slopes, I've got to click and change direction with this tool. It takes a little bit of practice. You'd have to probably try it a few times before you get going on this project, just to make sure you're selecting right. And then I got to come back up and close that loop. Look for that circle in order to close the loop. The circle will appear right on the tool cursor. Okay. So back down to gradient. I'm going to come in here. My noise samples. There's Jimmy Bobby. Opacity 70. And I'm going to drop, or this is Bobby Jimmy, sorry. I'm going to drop Bobby Jimmy in. And there we go. Hit escape. And I've colored that dune. So you can see that I'm not, I'm not sticking with the theme of my transparency so that I can see this is a sand dune. So I'm going to go back up to gradient, back up to selection, lower my opacity, come back. Oops, come back to gradient, make sure I've selected it. And I'm going to change maybe this. I'll change this to diamond. And I'm going to drag it across. Okay, and you can see the diamond effect there. But I have a lower opacity, looking a little bit better. I'm going to try one more time. Lower that down. I don't need to click on reverse. And drag it across again. Okay. So you can see uh, that's a lighter color in a darker area, so it's going to look darker. You can you can do a number of things for that. You can select a different area, increase the opacity slightly. But when you're satisfied, hit escape. And eventually, what I should see when you're done all of this, uh, using that option. So we're going to have selected all the different shades of the dune and colored them different gradients. We're going to have created my own gradient or defined my own gradient using opacity stops and color stops. And my last example I'm going to have in here that you guys will have to recreate is I'm going to create a noise gradient myself. Okay, so these are things that you have to do. Um, eventually, this entire sand dune area should be a multitude of different colors. You don't have to create a whole bunch of these two, but you do have to sort of shade as I was doing here with a similar theme, the rest of the sand dunes. Okay, that is your objective. And that is how you, number one, use the gradient tool. Number two, define a gradient. And number three, create a noise gradient.